Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to talk about the basics of saving and loading game data using a binary formatter inside of the Unity game engine. So in this example, I'm just using a save and load button on the canvas in order to execute the saves and loads. You can see on my save button that I have a script attached called save game, and we can put that into the on click event for the button and then reference the method inside of here. So save game and then save to file here so that when we click on save, it's obviously going to save the game. And with the load button, we have the same thing. Another script here I'm calling game loader. And this is going to be called on the on click event here as well, calling game loader dot load from file. Now, when you're setting up data as either a class or a structure, you need to mark it as serializable so that it can be saved to the file with the binary formatter. Otherwise, what's going to happen is that when you go to save, you're going to get an error message like this, where it's where it is not marked as serializable. So that's a really easy attribute to just add up here. Here you can see the type of game data I'm saving, save game data. So you just have to put serializable up here at the top, and then this will all be able to be saved to a file. So when you're trying to save data to a file and load it from the file and you want everything to come back the same, it's really handy to use a structure for that save game data. So you can see here that in the save game data, I have an integer for health, an integer for money, and a string for player time. So generally the kind of data you're going to be saving to the file is these kind of primitive data types. You wouldn't be saving entire game objects like a prefab to each of your save files but uh, rather you'd be saving specific information which may change from play session to play session that needs to be tracked between those play sessions. And then later when you load your game and you reinstantiate all of those game objects in your scene, then you load this information back into those objects. So here's our data that we're going to be saving. So then if we go over to my save game script, you can see that I have one function written inside of here. The first thing we do is check if the directory exists and then we have to give it the name of the directory. If we wanted to, we could actually make this a variable up here like I did with the game loader script. And that might actually be a good idea. So maybe I'll just add that in right here. And then we can replace these bits down here. Just reuse the name over and over again. And then over here, I'll do plus the slash. OK, so that'll help keep the naming consistent. And if you want to go a step further, you could even have um, something like a global dictionary for all of your names. If you're going to be using the same thing between files like I'm kind of doing here. But anyway, the first thing we do is check if the directory exists based on the name of the directory. And if it does not exist, then we have to create the directory before we can add a file into it. We create a new binary formatter object that is going to be the object that converts our unity data type that's our save game data or whatever else you want to save as long as it's serializable uh, to a binary file and the binary file is how it's stored on the computer so we use file.create with the directory path including the file name and extension over here in order to open up that file so it can be written to and we have that assigned as our file stream and then on the binary formatter we run the serialize function taking the file stream, which is this connection with the open file. And then we give it the data that we want to save into that file, which is our save game data. So the save game data right here, you can create it however you want to, but currently how it's being added to the save game file is the simplest way possible, which if we look into the save button, you'll see that we have this structure defined right here. So we just have the data already inside of the script and we can change these values to whatever we want to save to the file. In a fully functional game, you'd probably be getting each of these values from the object that uses it. So you're saving and loading the data to and from an object like this player has this amount of health currently. So we take that in creating a new copy of this structure for the save game data. And then we just have that value save when we run the save function. But anyway, the save game data is coming from right up here, which is just the values we define in the Unity inspector. We save that to the file, we close the file, and then if everything's successful, then we get this print message. So let's go ahead and run this real quick. We can see game saved to uh, the location on the computer. So this is where the project is, and this is the saves directory, and the file name, and the file extension .bin for binary. So if we uh, open up that folder, we can see this right here. If I right click on it and try to edit it, 
Uh, we're just going to see a bunch of gibberish because it's in uh, binary format right now. So it's not really human readable. So after that, we want to go over to our game loader script and basically do the same thing in reverse. So we're going to need a new binary formatter object. So this will allow us to convert the binary file back into readable data that we can use again in our Unity game. Then we need to open a file stream on uh, the same path to the exact file as before. So we're now loading the file that was saved. You can see save name and directory. Those are coming from up here, just keeping the naming consistent. But this is going to be the same file path. And we run it with file mode.open because we are trying to read it. We're not trying to write to it. So we have our file stream for opening and reading the file. And we run the binary formatter dot deserialize on the save file file stream. So we're just doing the same thing in reverse. Rather than serializing the data, we are deserializing it. And then we can cast that to our save game data format. So when we deserialize the format here, it doesn't guarantee uh, what data it's going to come back as. You can see that it returns an object right there. So then we cast it to save game data because that's what we expect and need it to be. And with our save game data, if it loads back properly, which it should if we saved and loaded with the same data structure, then we can use that data however we want, such as printing out the saved data, player name, money, and health. Now, generally, what you would do is you'd take this data and feed it to the other objects in your game, like the player or any enemies that need to be updated with the saved game data. But here we can confirm that the data is in fact loaded from the file back into our game with this function. So let's go ahead and try running that. So here we have our load function. I'm going to click here and we get loaded game data, player name, nothing, money, zero and health zero, which if we look at the save button, the save game data right here, the health is zero, the money is zero and the player name is uh, nothing as well. But we can change these values and then test it again. So let's change the health to 100, the money to 350 and the player name to Joe. So now we can go ahead and hit save here. No, I'm doing this while the game is running. So we can just update these values for testing. So I'm going to save that and then we're going to load it. So we can see loaded game data, Joe, money and health. So theoretically, it's loading the same data as before. But to prove that it is saved to the file, if we close that out, you can see the save game data is health zero, money zero, and player name nothing. If we hit play again, then that data should not be the same data that's saved to the file. So if we hit load, we should still expect to see Joe 100 health and 350 money, which if we hit load, we do. So that shows that the data that's in the file is different than the data that's in the save game script, and we know it's working. So from this point, you would just need to get reference to the other objects that need the data as the game's actually loaded. So, so this isn't a great way of doing it, but you could use something like find object of type. And then if you've declared a player class, then you would get that player. And then you could do dot health equals to load data dot health. So this would be assuming that you've created a player script and then that player script has a health property, then you could assign it like this and then that would load the proper value. So that would just be one example of how you could handle that. Probably not the best way, though. So that's pretty much going to cover it for this basic tutorial on uh, how to save and load data in the Unity game engine to and from binary files. So you need your serializable data type. You need your save function, which uses the binary formatter, opens the file stream, serializes it to the file. And then in reverse, you need a binary for formatter to run file.open with open mode, get the file stream, and then deserialize the data into your serializable data type. And then once you have your data back, you can load that wherever you need. So I've been Chris. I hope all of you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in some of my future Unity content.